Hey friends, welcome to the Stationery Cafe, your podcast for everything stationery, journaling, planning related, and fun things happening in the community. I'm April from Penguins Creative, and in today's episode, I'm excited to chat with my friend, Courtney, who many of you might know as Little Raven Inc. on Instagram and Patreon. Courtney has been an avid Hobonichi user since I first knew about the brand, and today is taking creative journaling to the next level with her unique art style and whimsical characters. So let's listen to her story today. Hey, Courtney, welcome to the Stationery Cafe. I am so happy to finally have you here with me today. (laughs) Courtney is from Little Raven, Inc. (laughs) Do you mind giving a little self-introduction to people who don't already know you? (laughs) Uh, Of course, of course. I am Courtney, and I am Little Raven, Inc. Pretty much everywhere now, I think I made everything the one tag um so people normally call me courtney diaz little raven ink it kind of goes together i am an aussie artist so i'm from australia and i am a walking rainbow basically uh and you i've been around a while so (laughs) if you don't know me hi (laughs) walking rainbow and pink season all year round yeah, pink is the co- the Pantone color of my life, and it should just always be that way. <laughs> I have, it's funny because recently I've had so many people um, standing in line at like stores and things. They go, "Do you is pink your favorite color?" And I turn around really seriously and go, "No, I really hate it. Like it's just the worst." And it I was them off. Dressed head to toe. <laughs> and then, one woman just outright laughed at me yesterday when she I'm sitting there with pink backpack pink dress pink hair and I was buying a pink pencil case and she was just like are you sure pink's not your favorite color and I'm like no no, I just it's it's hideous I hate it and she's like oh okay good to know (laughs) (laughs) play play with their head a little bit it's funny because now like um yeah I've been doing twitch streams and then I would try out pen colors or like Mm -hmm. colors of washi tapes and then people in the the (laughs) comment section will say oh that's that's Courtney pink right there and I'm like you're right it is It is a uh, pink. I, I I collect so many pinkings. Like when you were showing pinkings in your Twitch stream, I was like, I need to close my eyes because I will adopt them all. And I don't. I only have so many pens, and I can't all be storing pink ink. I I bought a pink ink the other day, so I'm just I just can't get away from it. But yes, awesome. the the pink the pink is the better. The vibrant the be- the vibrant the better. And. I basically say if the pink can slap you in the face, I'm all about it. So <laughs> that's, that's where we live. <laughs> I love that. I think Kelly, our co-host, would totally adopt that quote. She loves that. <laughs> I have messaged Kelly. I have messaged Kelly many, multiple times to talk about Sailor Moon pens, Hello Kitty pens, anything that is pink related. She's my spirit animal. Every time she talks about pink things, I always make little notes in the side of my notebook just to make sure that I message her and go, I agree, I agree. Oh, I did buy the Hello Kitty pen in the end. I, I tried really hard to resist it. Oh, and then yes. It just, I, it just turned up at my doorstep one day. I don't know how it happened, but yeah, I, I, I own it. It's that the, pen, pen is meant for you. Like it has Courtney like I'm, labeled on it. So, <laughs> so Courtney, um, people really who know is. Little Raven Inc.'s art will know that you have a crazy vibrant, unique style to your journaling the pink obviously the neon (laughs) color splashes the art journaling style kind of junk journaling but on like on drugs (laughs) can can i say that (laughs) yes so it's like it's crazy but also makes sense and i would love to explore where that came from (laughs) <laughs> like, and you've been in the community for a long time. So why don't you start yeah, out by I'm, telling us when did you start journaling and how did you get into stationery? <laughs> oh, I have been journaling since I was a kid. I actually have one of my one of my oldest ones right here. It is a one of the ones with the lock. It is uh, some crazy little fairy journal that my nan gave me. And 1997 is the date in this, this little baby. Oh uh, it, it, yeah, there's, there's odes to Hanson in this. I was, a, I still am. Um, who am I kidding? I still am. I love Hanson. Um, but this is, there's some cringy stuff in here. I probably got older ones, but this is the one that my, like, kept is probably the oldest one. So I've been journaling since I was a kid and I got into 
notebooks and stationery because of my mum, actually. She is a crafter and a maker, and I have very fond memories of, I don't know if you guys have play school over there in, in where you guys are, and they have this thing called a useful box. Mm-hmm. And the useful box would have lots of craft materials in it and lots of um, stamps and cardboard and all the things that you find to make stuff. Mm -hmm. And my mom actually had a useful box in our home. And so it was stuff that I could create and collage and play and paint. And she had like kitty rubber stamps and things. She used to hand make Christmas presents for for our family members. I can remember her being up at like 1am making gift baskets with fabric bows and things. So I've been... I have lived a very creative life and my, my mom has part, like influenced that to, to the max. Um, rubber stamping was something that I have done since I was probably three. Oh. Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I can't uh, trips to the, to the shopping center to a place called the Spruce Goose, which was like um, the nineties, whole store devoted to rubber stamps and that was like the treat that we could do to go to the rubber stamping store I, I, I just I've just lived a very creative life and I'm very lucky that my family have supported me constantly when I said when I grow up I want to be an artist mm. and there was never any any way that they would have said no they just said if this makes you happy and if you want to go for it then do it. There was never any way, any time in all my life, my mom and my dad never said, no, I think you should get a real job. Uh, but I have said that to myself multiple times. Like I should probably go and, you know, be a real person, <laughs> do something besides being an artist. And I, I love what I do. And I'm very passionate about journaling. Journaling is like my life force and my anchor so I I do talk very passionately about journaling I get very emotional talking about journaling because it's just it's something that I try and tell people anyone and everyone that will listen that journaling is something that will keep you together when you feel broken so and I have gone through quite a lot of crappy situations and journaling's been one of those things that have you know glued me back together I guess is the way to say it so I've kept journals my entire life uh all through high school I've got like journals that are like crappy little spiral notebooks with like ribbons attached to them love it and I've got like all different (laughs) I'm still a pink addicted person these are like (laughs) high school high school notebooks and I've had like my first ever leather journal is mm. covered in like stickers and I was collaging. Like nice. I was collaging before collaging was a thing. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, vintage papers. Look at this, man. This is like a red. Oh <laughs> my God, I love I, it. <laughs> I, have, I, have kept, I have kept my life between the pages of journals my, for as long as I possibly could remember. And I have, it it went from journaling for myself to writing out how I was feeling and um, being a a, a bigger girl in school, I was probably teased a lot for being like plus size. So instead Mm -hmm. of venting to friends, would I would talk to my journals like mm. I would talk to them as if they were a friend I named my journals I, I I wrote in them constantly and it's it's a sounding board and it would never it would always be there it was like an anchor stone like your journal was just just a it's a home I like I, I say this to my patreon people all the time your journal is the safest place that you can go where you can be yourself where you could say whatever you need to say and it's not going to judge you it's not going to tell you something horrible I mean you're probably <laughs> telling horrible things to yourself I know, yeah. <laughs> but it'll, never, it'll, never, it'll never get on board and bash you back I know but, um, I just I I've lived and breathed writing and keeping journals and art my my entire life and I'm so envious was, of you and your family influence on that because like to this day I still sometimes doubt and question if my family think what I'm doing is child's play still at the age of 30 I, I was be- I was very I was very blessed I was very blessed that my my parents just completely supported when I got into uni um for an arts through a creative arts degree they were 
they were really excited for me, even though I had no clue what I was going to do with a creative arts degree. <laughs> it just made me so happy. And that my mom's always said, chase the joy. And that's, that's what I did, like art and creating and journaling and documenting my life is my joy. And I've just been really lucky to turn that joy into something that I can do as a job. Not everyone can do that and say that. And I am thankful every single day that I've had someone in my corner cheerleading me to the point where I could get to this point, including my husband. Patreon exists because of my husband, not because of me. It wasn't me. He was like, well, why don't you try it? Like, why don't you, you know, see if it works? And if it doesn't it work, go. you know, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll figure something else out. And I did. And I jumped with my eyes closed really tightly. And um, it, it worked. So, yeah, I, I've been a journal keeper longer than I can remember. <laughs> I definitely feel like you've been in this way longer than I did because I started Hobonichi in 2014 and then you were already very creatively doing amazing stuff with your art journaling which then you transferred yeah. to the Hobonichi in those early years and we we're like oh my god so I, I definitely remember mm -hmm. Mitz being one of my main influences when it comes to journaling and then she introduced me to you with your creative splashes of color that she adds into her collagings of her pages and since then like you've mm -hmm. always been consistent and I love that about this that, that you've been such a colorful force in the community throughout and even to today <laughs> <Yeah>. right <laughs> i think i started I, I started uh youtube back in about 2011 i want to say 20 2010 10, 10, I, I scrolled way back into the archives this morning and the first one was like a slideshow video of just photographs like that's <laughs> Yeah, no, vintage. That's how but we did I, it back then. <laughs> yeah. When I didn't have quite have the skills that I have now, you know, slideshows were the, were the thing and adding music. But I, I worked in a altered sewing book journal and that's where I think a lot of people saw me way back when I first started. And art, art journaling was where I did begin. When I began more publicly, I should say, on, on YouTube, I've always journaled in like normal normal journals. And I've always collaged, I, I say my style is where art and life collide. And I always find a way to have photographs interlaced with drawings, interlaced with collages, um, ephemera, like I was keeping, I've got my university acceptance letter in one of these journals back here, like when I got <laughs> offered a position, nice. like ephemera and keeping all those things. I mean, it's I'm way back in one of them, but. I I think that's probably where a lot of people found me. But yeah, Hobonichi around 2014 is probably around when I had seen a few videos pop up on my feed. Mitz has, has been like, Mitz is a cornerstone of so many people switching into Hobonichi. I love that woman so much. She <laughs> is just the, the, I heart her to bits. And then I was like, oh, this, this Hobonichi thing looks pretty cool. I remember um, getting my Midori book for Hobonichi, mm. I got into um, Midori probably a, around that time. Yeah, yeah, mine's actually one of the old school Midori. Where it still say says Midori. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I had. I remember doing a huge group order for a bunch of Australians because Midori was not here in 2013. Not even you couldn't get it and i found a website like i don't think it exists anymore but it was like pencils.jp <laughs> and i i remember organizing a like three and a half thousand dollar midori order for aussies so that we could all get one of these beautiful notebooks over here and i remember sitting in my lounge room just spiraled out oh there was covers God. everywhere and inside and it was the I had so much fun it <laughs> brought me so much joy knowing that I was getting journals into the hands of people that have been so desperate to get these yeah um, obviously it's a lot easier to get stuff now in Australia but back then you had to like you had to be like a ninja like a stationary ninja to get some of these <laughs> things over here in Australia. I love that title. Like, come on, man. Like, I want to be a stationary, yeah, stationary ninja. ninja. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is my this is my original one and I got it customized because I just I actually sent it over. Man, that was that was a stressful time. Sending this baby over to um Bam Kuhan to get oh. altered because I just 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> the most expensive way possible. That's the so longest way but... to to get there. Um, you from oh. Australia to all the way to California. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to yeah. us, it's like and it's I, just I local. Remember, <laughs> yeah, you guys can walk in and do it. And I was like, no, I really want my my OG one to be. I'd spent a long time patinering this baby. Like, I, this has been. In my handbag with me, it's and I it's, like, it's okay, reflecting can... my reflection here. That's how patina it is. <laughs> like seriously, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, I I love this thing, and I think it was the first time that I considered all my other journals had been um, like single entities where they didn't have inserts. Like they were all their own thing. Like once mm-hmm. it was finished, it was archived. This was the first sort of system where the cover stayed with me and the mm-hmm. inserts went in. And I, I love that so much because all I could think of was it would end up telling a story of my life, basically. And the inserts will come and they'll change and they'll shift and everything. But the cover will basically be a storyteller, even though it's so fatigued now, there's not much of the story left. But um, <laughs> it, it's, been, it's been with me for I think 2013 was probably when I got this this baby, and I like man, I just I love stationery, like hardcore. <laughs> I don't have a love affair. <laughs> this is we all do here, which is why this podcast exists, and why we need people like yes. you to come share yes. the story. We're not. We're normal here. <laughs> we're normal oh, here. Oh yeah, we're, we are. Yeah, we're of the normal. But my <laughs> my love of color, I think. Um, being someone who suffers very harshly with anxiety and is crippled by it a lot of time, I compensate by using color, almost like medicine. Um, and I journal with bright colors and I wear bright colors and I, my shoe collection is hardcore because I always look down because I'm always so stressed so I have really bright shoes so that if I'm looking down I can all I can see is color and so my journal reflects that and that's kind of even though I have rainbow splash through all of my books most of the time the writing's probably not as happy and go lucky as all the images Mm -hmm. but I believe in faking faking it till you make it basically (laughs) and yeah and if I am color brings me joy dressing the way I do brings me joy I know it brings other people joy when they see me out about I have been come uh, people come up to me and told, t- say that it's so lovely to see so much color when I'm walking in the city amongst a whole heap of people wearing black and gray yeah and I am dressed head to toe in like rainbow um it does help lift other people's moods and so I use color in my journals as a way to combat all the doom and gloom that's probably spiraling around in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously my creatures and my monsters are representations of myself almost. So I, I talk a lot. I have a, a love for the que- the kooky and the weird and the, and the creatures and stuff. But color is, is medicine if you're feeling just gray. You've got to combat, you've got to combat it with color basically. So that's probably why most of my journals are filled with color. And I watched one of your videos. You said that collage is one of your love languages. And I'm like, yes, absolutely. The combination yes. of color yes. with ephemeras, with the cutouts of the little monsters you illustrated, and then like slapping on all together. It doesn't make sense, but it looks so good. <laughs> and that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think. I, I, like I said, I've said this before, I live, I live on scraps of paper. I, I have, like, if I turned my camera around, you would see multiple piles of paper. Like there are paper piles, paper tubs, paper. I can't let, let go of any paper. It's a real sickness. But um, I, I love putting together things that are, like don't, don't, don't make sense, but normally I will have a reason for putting it down. It always has a connection to something. It always has a meaning. Um, I put a lot of symbolism in my collage. If I, because my journals are on display publicly, Mm -hmm. I use a lot of my collage to code up 
what I'm feeling without putting it down in words. Uh, and my monsters are the same as that. Um, they will have, if like they might have their head tilted and that might be me feeling like a bit unsure of something. Uh, I may have a certain color that represents an emotion or a feeling and that will go down in there. So there might be like a red door and it might be like, I'm really, really angry. I feel like I'm banging my head against the door. So I've got a monster that's got a body that's got a red door for a body. And I use that as a way to emote things that I'm feeling without writing you know, a whole mm -hmm. lot of like hot, hot rage down because <laughs> I have, I have my journals on display and I'm constantly teaching other people um, through Patreon the same thing, the, tip, the tips and tricks. So it may not make sense, but there's like an underlying code for everything that I do. And then you just slap hot pink on everything and everything looks great. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And I feel like you totally describe the collaging process so well and so thoroughly that I feel like I haven't been able to do so on the podcast because for the stationary community, collaging is definitely a theme you see many people do on the Traverse Notebook. And it's hard to describe. Like there's many people with their style where it's like the vintage collage or like the Taiwanese illustrator washi tape collage. And people will ask, why, why are you not writing? Why are you collaging? And I feel like what you just said totally explains it. It is what the person who created that piece of art is feeling at that time. Each little piece exactly. and their placement means something to them. And yes, like to you, it's yeah, like I, art. People can draw, yeah, people can draw their feelings. People can draw their feelings. People can photograph their feelings. Yes. People can write their feelings. But collage artists do exactly the same thing. We're just doing it with little bits of paper, little bits of color. You know, we're, we're expressing ourselves with tidbits like little little tidbits will come all come together magically and they'll mean something they may not know no one else needs to know what it means mm -hmm. but it's it's got a meaning yeah but collage is definitely my one of my favorite oh, is it my favorite I think it would have to be <laughs> my favorite I, I, there's so many things I love to do but when I am trying to get into what I call the creative domino effect and I'm trying to make something happen when I don't have anything. Like I've got no creative juice. I am tired. I've got a video due for work. I've got a deadline. The thing that I come to, the thing that I, 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 I show up for is collage. I will always start with a collage because mm -hmm. it's easy. It's mindless. My hands know what they're doing without my brain having to do talking. Mm -hmm. Like it, they, they autopilot. Collage is my autopilot but it's also the one way that I know that I can express myself without having to have a recipe or a skill, I guess. But then I think sometimes collage does take skill, but then at the same time, you could just get a whole heap of really pretty papers and collage them down to a paper and you're done yeah. and you can be happy with that. So yeah. mm -hmm. I, I think if, if, if you're feeling intimidated by journaling, I think start with collage because exactly. pretty paper makes everyone, everyone happy. I love that because this totally shows that journaling is not just about writing things. Like people think about journaling as, okay, dated sessions of an entry of your life with ink mm -hmm. or pen mm -hmm. or anything. And it has to be neat, it has to be cute, maybe slap some washi tapes on it. But no, it is however you want it to be. And if collaging is yeah. the way to do that, then like have fun with ephemeras and papers and bits. And that's why we have 400 rows of washi tape. And like, that's, that's <laughs> why we, we buy things um, in the stationary hobby that is not necessarily what people think journaling is about. So I, I love yeah. that you broke that down and really, you know, opens up, I think the opportunity for people to explore journaling as a creative expression rather than a yeah. rigid habit that, like is maybe like related to stoicism or like you know a, a ritual or like a, a good healthy mm -hmm. habit it could be fun it could be a way to <laughs> to be therapeutic oh, to yourself sure. <laughs> i love yes, that yes. I, I, journaling should be a joy no matter how you do it if it brings you joy you're doing it right you don't have to follow anyone's how to's mine yours anyone's if it's making you happy then then it's doing its job. Like that's, that's its job is to bring you joy and to just, especially at the moment with the apocalypse, journaling is a place that people can go to and just feel 
safe. Like no. it's a safe place. So I, yeah, I, I would do lots without my journals, man. I, there was a time when I didn't journal. Um, and that was when I was um, in my first first marriage and was very, very young. I got, I, I got married very young and stupid. And I left, I moved to England. I lived in England for a couple of years. And my um, ex-husband got mentally and physically abusive. Mm. So I stopped all creative, mm -hmm. all creativity, everything, stopped mm -hmm. it all. And um, when I walked out is actually when I started journaling again. And I feel like if I had journaled through that, I probably would have had enough strength to leave earlier. Mm. Um, because I think it can be journaling. Obviously, it's fun. It's beautiful. And I love it to death. But there's also a healing property to, to, to journaling. And it will help. I think it helps you make you feel more brave. And I regret not journaling during that time. Like there were little, little bits and piece, pieces, but it, it almost crushed me creatively. Mm -hmm. Like I was a shadow of who I was mm -hmm. like back way back then. Like he took everything that made me, me. Mm -hmm. And so I, when I got the courage to walk out and I, I got the courage to, to try again was when I started my YouTube channel, actually uh, it was a way for me to try and get back parts of me that I felt had been scattered. And it was pretty much not long after then my, my, my husband walked in, well, my husband then walked into my, well, I shouldn't say walked into my life because we met on World of Warcraft because nerd love is strong. <laughs> we <laughs> met in a very intense battlefield. <laughs> I love it. Yes, we were hit, raid healers for a, for a raid team and the rest is history. The rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh you've you've blossomed since then and i i love that about you and the fact that you are using your patreon and your love for journaling right now on a daily basis to inspire many people to do the same it's just so motivational and i'm just <laughs> so impressed right now i'm having goosebumps <laughs> oh. <laughs> i love that thank you courtney i i really want to like say thank you for so many people <laughs> right now and i'm so proud of you for doing that and like i'm thank just so impressed you. and so inspired to maybe start doing a lot more art collaging than i have been doing on my in my journals myself Mm -hmm. yeah yeah collage is the portal man it's a it's a deep deep portal of wind <laughs> earlier you said that around you if we look around your camera you'll be surrounded by scraps and paper and i feel like that is probably many people's question like how are you making sense <laughs> Courtney just showed me like a stack of paper like she just randomly picked up and they look like they're glued to each other. I was about to ask like how do you make sense of these like in your studio? Like is there um, a way that at least you kind of like know where things are? Like how are you organizing your stuff and how are you making the best of, of each pieces of ephemera? Like just this is like a little just a technical thing that i personally am curious about <laughs> um un underneath my desk that you can well you underneath my art desk i have an l i have two desks i have a pink desk in front of me which is where i film and then to the side i have like a big set of desks with lots of supplies underneath this desk is a set of drawers that i attempted to really really hardly to try and have it all themed <laughs> And um, it didn't work. There is, there is no way to organize collage in any way, shape or form. It's got its own life force. It will take over. I have so many beautiful vintage plates that are just um, filled with paper. Like you could turn, I generally try and have little plates of paper that I try and work from constantly. But if you let it take over, it will. And there is no stopping it, really. There's, and I wish that I had some sort of guru knowledge on how to keep your collage paper at bay. But it, uh, no, they're, they're, <laughs> they have a mind of its own. There's, there's, <laughs> there's no way. And because I can't let anything go, I like this is a scrap of like vintage paper that I'm like, well, there's some really beautiful little bits of ink on this, and it probably will find its way onto a journal page. 
some time, but today's not the day. So we'll just put it back on the pile. Back on the, <laughs> back on the plate. I love that. <laughs> I just put it back on the plate. I, I kind of keep plates close by because I'm always like, there's always a time for collage. There's always a time to put a piece of paper on, on, a, on your journal page, your planner page. There's always time, but I do have drawers underneath me that if I opened them, I would probably be attacked by paper. Um, I do try and organize once every six ish months to sort of go through things and part with some things. I also have two very, um, lovely best friends that when they come to sleepover we have sleepovers like we're five we have arty creative journal sleepovers once oh a my month. god that's the best but, <laughs> <laughs> they come to my place and then they take little baskets and they come and shop my stash so they help take away some of the stuff um they're, they're very it's for the cause they say it's just to help me stay on stay on top of things help trim your room a little bit you know like it's like a huge yeah. plant that keeps growing you gotta snip off some yeah. extra branches <laughs> to That's keep it right. going so <laughs> they, they go in over the night time i just stay in the dining room i just let them go pretty buck wild in here when it comes to uh, papers i i do sometimes look through their stuff before they leave my house and be like <laughs> you better not be oh, taking that scrap with the note with the ink on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know that, that you know that scrap of pink paper put it back please. um but no i i try and cull probably once every six months and we'll keep things that have some sort of meaning that i can see is working if there's i have a lot of body parts they have a lot of monster body parts um <laughs> that are lurking around like monster heads and eyeballs and things that just sort of live and if they really really want to be part of a collage they will end up smack bang in front of me on my desk they'll find a way to my hands um but there is there is no way to really tame the collage paper beast it's just lots of plates, lots of boxes, lots of drawers, folders, journals. Um, I, I wish I had better, better, uh, better That's knowledge. just the reality of it, guys. Like, seriously, there's like no way to, to organize all this, especially when your creativity needs to unleash. Like, don't, don't try to get in the way by making it hard to find something, okay? Exactly. <laughs> I, <laughs> my husband tried to help me. I haven't tried to help me organize my studio a couple of weeks ago and he put like my pouches underneath my desk and I'm like, do you know who I am, honey? Do you remember who you married? Why are they under my desk? I need to see them. I need to see what I have. And he's like, but then you don't need all the pouches. I said, I don't need them, but I like to look at them. And the same goes for paper. Is so that's why I have like little trays of paper on my working desk. And then every couple of months, I'll actually pull out the drawers and switch the paper up. I will mm. like, that way I'm, I'm, I feel like I've got new things. Reshuffling um, a little the, bit. <laughs> yeah, reshuffling. And because if I'm staring at the same tray for like six months, and obviously they're not being used for six months, mm -hmm. it's time to, to change it up and, you know, refresh what's on the plate. But I just keep buying plates. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Elliot, my mm -hmm. husband, jokes to me that hey april the garage is full is because he loves cars so he used car references and i'm like what about a bigger garage <laughs> like maybe <laughs> all i need is a bigger desk or maybe two yeah. more shelves for just to go mm -hmm. my station yeah. <laughs> yeah whatever i say to hubby it's, i say to hubby it's time to go to ikea he's like what do we need now and i'm like i need more space <laughs> Everyone Even can relate. Trolleys. Yeah, I know. It's Three just... more rascogs. Line them up. <laughs> I bought. Do you know they have a mini one now? Like they have a little baby rascog truck. Yeah, it's what? just so beautifully under the desk. It's like a baby version of the normal one. And I was like, well, I don't have a use for you, but I can find one. So <laughs> I, I, they can. They, this will really become like you know those Hong Kong din something where you have multiple plates on the rolling rascog. That's gonna be your little tra tea tray serving for your collage bits. Believe me, I have looked. I have looked at Lazy Susans for that very purpose, so that I can just have like almost like a sushi train of collage papers. <laughs> oh, oh my god, we could get those. 
like a mechanical train set that kids have and just set yes. off a track that just comes around. <laughs> and then I'd need, so, I'd need someone to like add new bits to the top of it so that I'd be surprised every time it did a, a loop. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, oh there, there's, there's no way, there's no way to tame the paper. You just live with it, love it, use it and you just exist with it that's the only thing you can do <laughs> I love it. just just like all your fantastical monsters and beasts that you draw like these are they're wild but they they live oh. with you in peace so don't try yeah. to piss them <laughs> off <laughs> they are they are cheap they're cheeky little critters and they will make you want to tear your hair out but they're very lovable and they are Almost, um, actually, they're actually self-portraits. Whenever I draw a, create, a creature, it's always linked to me somehow. There is either some something that I'm feeling, and everyone, a lot of my inkies always say, can you have a couple of happy ones? And I'm like, oh, I, I don't do happy very well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do happy. No, I, I, I try. I have tried a couple of happy monsters, but... I generally have them looking so forlorn and so lost because it's always a reflection of how I'm feeling mm -hmm. most of the time. Um, I will I, every now and again I'll illustrate myself with the pink hair and like as myself, but the monsters are always a very emotional link to me. Um, and my, my actually my, my whole entire creativity is linked to my emotions. It's just, mm -hmm. I, I lead my art leads with my heart and I wear my heart firmly on my sleeve. I will cry at a drop of a hat. <laughs> I was just doing a Patreon video last week where I was talking about my monsters and, and how they are linked to how I feel and before I know it I'm sobbing to them as I'm trying to talk about monsters and I'm like I want to get a grip um, but it, it really is I, I am a super emotional person and my monsters are very much linked to that so if you see a monster in someone's journal and you know it's mine it's probably me feeling a bit lost and a little bit like alone and sad but um, they are the, they are well the cherished and well placed in the stationary community they, around yeah. the world. I think that's a great they, way to look at it. We're all a they little... are they pro they protect the journals of the world. That's what like <laughs> uh, they, they're journal protectors. Those little guys because they they protect me and they have they oh, they just they they jump around in here and they they I love they, it. If what if I draw something and it has a voice and it, and it talks back to me, I know that it's here to stay. If it doesn't give me any sort of emotion, doesn't talk back, I sound like a crazy person just saying this out loud. <laughs> no, not at all. I, <laughs> I am feeling all of this. And I think in a way, journaling for us, we need a little bit of that vulnerability on our pages. Sometimes we're not brave enough to write about sad things. And this is a good way to manifest that without us really dealing with the bad or sad parts. Because we always think, yeah. oh, the journal needs to look pretty. It needs to have this like bright color, which doesn't necessarily mean pretty <laughs> or like happiness. Sometimes it's like you said, it's to overcompensate. And I love that the little monsters are jumping around mm -hmm. the world, adding a little bit of that feeling for people when they can't mm -hmm. put it to words. Yeah, so they exactly. can mostly find you on Patreon, right? Is that where you kind of curate and have like people be able to download those videos? Can you can you tell us a little bit about your Patreon journey? <laughs> yes, I started my Patreon in 2016. Um, and like I mentioned, my husband was the one that pushed me into it. Uh, we got to a point where we were a one income family and living in Sydney and prices were getting higher and higher and higher. Uh, two kids and it's not cheap to live here. And I kind of was like, well, I think it's time I like the kids are, are getting old enough now where I, I want, you know, they're in school. It's time for me to, you know, help with the, the family finances. I didn't want to feel almost useless being at home. There was no reason for me to be at home. And, and I was making YouTube content already and I was doing really well at, at it. And, I had quite a bit of a following and Patreon was a platform that was relatively new at the yeah. time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I joined within the first year of it being created, I want to say, or the, the first year of it being more accessible and more publicized, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And hubby said, why don't you give Patreon a go? And I'm like, no, that, what if no one joins? Like, that would be really embarrassing. And <laughs> it, it, would, it would break my heart and it would just affirm to me what I'm already feeling inside. Like, all my self-doubts are already, you know, swirling mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. What if it just burns? And he said, so what? You did it. You tried it. And if it doesn't work out, we'll work something else out. You can either uh, go back to uni. Because at that time, I was do- I was deciding whether I wanted to go and teach high school students art. Mm. Because I had some pretty crappy high school art teachers that... <laughs> I know. Almost, they almost bro- almost broke me. Like they distinguish art. art exactly. Instead of trying to I think that's definitely a trend for many countries to where art is like the last thing you need to worry about in your education. Yeah. So <laughs> I remember my my grade 8 art teacher, Mrs. Spears. If you're listening to this love, like look at me now. But she actually told me then I shouldn't pursue a career in art because I don't have the talent. And I quit art all the way up until grade 11. I was like, wow, she's my art teacher. She knows what she's talking about. But I missed it so much. I was like, I, I missed making art. I almost just stopped completely because this woman, this random woman had told me that I didn't have the talent for it. Mm. And I thought about that. And I was like, well, if I, if I become an art teacher, then I can encourage the kids of today to, to draw and to, to create art and that it's okay to want to be an artist. It's okay. It's not like the world needs art to survive. It needs art to have hope. It needs art to bring people together. The artists hold the world together, man. Like oh we my God, are the yeah. people that are keeping and people <laughs> forget that. And so I was like, well, I could go back to uni and get a teaching degree and, you know, become a high school art teacher or I could try Patreon. Right. And so I was like, well, doing patreon and doing working from home meant that i could still be home for the kids when they came Mm -hmm. home from school which was a big factor for me being home for them and being and making sure that i could be there for them when they needed me my mom was um when i was a kid she was a stay-at-home mom right up until i was um late primary school and Mm -hmm. the the difference between my sister and i is my mom went to work when my sister was in primary school and there's a massive difference between us and our personalities and how we grew up and so I was like, okay, I'm going to see if I can do this. And so I, I launched, I had about 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. So I had a, I, I don't know, okay following. Like it's obviously slowed right down because most of my creative energy is now poured into Patreon. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people miss me on YouTube. So I'm slowly trying to get <laughs> enough of me to be, to juggle both platforms. But um, Patreon is, is, has, been amazing and i have um grown every single month since being on there in 2016 i have worked my little heart out um collage sheet day is huge for my little patreon inky tribe um and i give i give everything i possibly can and i also feel safer because it's behind a paywall that i can be vulnerable and i can put my heart out into a video Because people that are there are there for me and they're Mm. there to see me work and me journal. Whereas if I was to put some of the stuff that I do in Patreon up on YouTube, that is opening a gate for like people that don't know who I am, don't really know much about me. And it just, it didn't, I wanted, (laughs) yeah. And yeah, trolls, man, like don't feed them. Um, It, it, Oh, it's been fantastic and I, I could never have expected it to get to the point that it is now um, to the point where I feel almost like a legitimate part of my marriage where I, I, I'm an equal with my husband. I've almost taken over my husband and income and my, wow. my husband, you know. Congratulations. Like I, That's awesome. <laughs> That's... <laughs> I, have a, I have a mini competition with myself and him. He doesn't know about it, but I'm like, I'll take over you one day. Like that's my goal. <laughs> is um it's it's been amazing and i've been super super lucky and super grateful that i've created a a community of people where they feel safe to also soundboard back to me how they're feeling and the facebook group for the top tier uh pledges become a haven for everyone where they can go and vent and talk about something that's going on in their journaling and know that it's a safe space 
for for whoever's in there and i i just it's i can't i can't put into words like i would i would stumble and i'd get tongue tied about how passionate i am about my patreon work and that i i don't go in it to teach you how to be a journaler mm -hmm. i don't my teach my teaching style is not here's how you do xyz mm -hmm. I, i'm not i'm not that teacher i will hold your hand and i will give you i'll take you down a path and i will show you streets and Hash, I say hashtag this. choose your own adventure right <laughs> exactly exactly i just i i don't want to teach you how to draw like me i don't want to teach you how to journal like me but i will inspire you to journal as much as you possibly can and and however you feel comfortable i i don't feel like i would be a very good teacher at teaching you how to draw monsters i mean there are tutorials there but they're very few and far between i get passionate about teaching people to explore and get all their emotions out in their journals like there have been women mm -hmm. that have not even started journaling and joined my patreon and they've messaged me and be like where have you been all my life like <laughs> i i've just i've discovered journaling through you and now i can't stop and i've never felt better and um you know there's been people that have lost loved ones and they're using their journal to heal through that and i my my patreon is more about inspiring you to journal how you want and i will give you techniques i will give you like the a loose recipe of how i do things mm -hmm. but i i want you to do it your way i don't want you to be a carbon copy of me there's no point in that i want you to find your own voice and your own style and and your own joy you're gonna chase your journal bliss man if you if that's that's what patreon has been for me is teaching people to get excited and passionate about journaling because i can't ever see myself not journaling i'm gonna be 90 i'm still gonna be writing in paper books i don't care if the world is digital and like <laughs> computers are running the world i have enough supplies to last me a few lifetimes they will only be used to power your rotate rotary machine that gives you That's that right sushi like, um, nice yes That's right. i, I, I don't it. think i could i could never be a digital journaler i can i digital art i have um i've found a i guess a, a happy medium between smashing digital and traditional stuff together mm -hmm. with my collage sheets um but yeah i my patreon is is where the party's at basically if you want to see more of me <laughs> that's the place that's the place yes to go. <laughs> yeah. awesome oh my gosh i i feel like already what you've shared so far on instagram and youtube have already been a vibrant representation of what you have been creating and it's just so amazing to hear that there's more <laughs> there's more on patreon okay. so definitely i'm like now i want to go and subscribe to a tier and see what all we're like be at the party <laughs> yeah, i'm yeah. missing out <laughs> yeah yeah, that, that's the thing I, that's why i've tried to do a bit more youtube this year because i don't want i don't want people to feel like they have to pledge to patreon to mm -hmm. see my work i mean i already have a huge catalog on youtube already but a lot of the stuff that i'm doing now no one really sees i i i'm trying to be a little bit more public i am an introvert squirrel a lot and i realized that I, ba I barely post on social media and i know social media is such a beast where if you want people to recognize you and know about it mm -hmm. that you need to post and i i hate it but i also yeah. understand it it's 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 hard yeah, but that's... i'm I'm, tr I'm trying to get better at juggling both but when i make two videos a week already for patreon and then collage sheets and blog posts and monitoring a Facebook group and all that sort of stuff. I've had so much trouble trying to have pull more creative energy out of me to mm -hmm. make YouTube as well. Um, and because Patreon pays my pays my bills, like that's just the that's mm -hmm. just the nature of the beast. I have yeah. a family and I have two kids that you know, and raising kids is like just a money sinkhole, like money. <laughs> Think <laughs> and, then, and then on top of that you have a stationary addiction oh my gosh you, yes you, you know. <laughs> so i need to keep doing patreon to support my stationary addiction and keep my kids alive so <laughs> totally agree with you on that so please <laughs> yeah. continue to do so and 
Speaking of the stationary addiction, I have to ask you, can you share with us your 2021 planner lineup? <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'm most excited about. And I've already seen a sneak peek, okay? I went on your YouTube channel and saw what you did with the note and I am so excited to follow your path. <laughs> Oh, man. So please. Uh, okay. Okay. I love that you said this is the last portion. It's like the first question on your questionnaire. Like, what is your 21 line? I'm like, no, this is the last bit. It's because I cannot shut up. No, and no, is this is perfect. <laughs> this, is why my, this is why my Patreon videos are like one and a half hours. It's because I don't know where to stop talking. But when you love something, a lot about it. You talk a lot about it. Um, okay. My 2021 20, lineup, my main journal and the one that I do the, the most in is obviously the Hobonichi. Um, it is in the sweet pink leather cover, which came back in that meet again sale. Oh my goodness. I am, I'm praying. I am praising the journal gods because I missed out on this the first <laughs> yes. time it came around. And I was so mad at myself. I bought the A6. I don't know why. I don't even use the A6. But I think it was because it was like so expensive. And I'd already bought so many covers. And I was like, I can't justify the A5. And then I was trying to find it secondhand. And no one will give it up. because oh, No, beautiful. no. This is a treasure there. I, oh, <laughs> I, hunted, I hunted high and low for this, this cover. And I could not find it. I said to my husband, I missed the unicorn of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they had that like meet again thing and I was all I said to my husband was if the sweet pink is there I'm not asking permission I'm just gonna buy it just know what's happening and, it was, <laughs> and I, I was I was just I was so excited but it's in the sweet pink leather cover um and I actually switched back into this cover for this for this meeting because I put my I put it into a brown leather cover I said well that's not the representation of who you are so I, I put it back in and I have it's it's like bright and colorful and crazy and there's paper in the pockets and everything you could possibly want um i'm pretty sure there's actually a flat lay of this in instagram maybe mm -hmm. i don't know i but um i got the event and this is the first time i've actually bought the event and it's because every time i get a a, a five potency i end up having to perform surgery on it because it gets too fat. Of course. I, um, I'm, like I'm already in February. And, and this is already bulking oh to the point of no return. I love that. I love how, how the Hobonichi allows us to go that hardcore in our journals. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I I wanna I wanna if if Hobonichi are listening, could you release this in like two month volume so we could have Hobonichi every two months a new book because I'm in February and I don't want to perform surgery on an event and I'm 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 at the point where I you're could about have to. to. <laughs> I just I do I I take this to journaling meetups with my friend Marissa and like we had one yesterday for a birthday and I said I'm not bringing my Hobonichi because I don't want the weight like it's gotten to the point where I don't want the the weight of her big bertha but uh yeah this is my my main uh if um my main source i have the monthly i have um which you probably already know the monthly has all my photo highlights mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. so um i need to make a, a video for youtube on this because That's i get perfect. asked a lot a lot <laughs> i've got a tutorial i've got a tutorial on patreon but i don't have one on youtube um my weekly section is all about gratitude mm -hmm. So I try and I try and be more grateful each day. I mean, there are some weeks that you can um, my my journal. You can tell when I go through a depression stage, and <laughs> and it's blank. So it goes from being fully colorful to like I've been hit by depression, and I think that's okay. I don't. Yeah. I I thought about going back and and filling it in, and then I'm like, no, because it's a it's almost like a mood board. You can it's like a you yeah. can see how I'm feeling based on like I go from like I had a week down and then we'll we'll, we'll we'll pick back up. We're back and then <laughs> we're, we're back to to crazy. But yeah, there's some little crazy little I love cat it. monsters and things. And the daily pages are are just that they're documenting like what's happening on that day and all that sort of stuff. So I have I have this baby as my main journal, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm always I'm always behind. Like I'm. 
forever <laughs> behind in this journal. I don't think I'm ever going to be ahead of the game with this. Um, my other journal is actually my Midori. Um, and this is the one that I come to when I need to uh, get something off my chest, when I need to not have a date, a time. Mm -hmm. I just feel like stretching out and getting like emotional and things and right. all that sort of stuff. It's just a place where I don't have a reason or an event or anything. It's just like a yeah. touchstone. It's, it's, mm -hmm. This one's my anchor. So anchor. like I, I think... Yeah, this is the anchor. It feels like home. I mean, my hobo feels like home, but I don't have to. Your second like, home. I don't, yeah. <laughs> we can, we can have multiple my, homes. <laughs> it's my, my apartment with the view. So, I love that. Um, <laughs> the ocean side one. We're so rich yeah, and stationary. Like, we can have multiple yeah. homes. That's fine. <laughs> it's, it's, my, it's my holiday home when the house feels too stressful. <laughs> so... <laughs> um, do you make your own inserts or do you use the traveler's company one um i have gone through oh, half and half really at the moment i'm using one i picked up in japan oh my god um, that's a cool one that's the one of their yeah books collaboration yeah, special the book collaboration. i have i pick up all the special collabs when i was in japan because this you can't some of them don't make it to australia you'd think we're in some sort of distant Hard, like hard to reach place that stationery just doesn't go to <laughs> but um i don't understand we like paper too guys we like paper too. <laughs> um my planner that they're my two journals i guess oh and i have the hope and you five year as my um oh, man 2020 is basically blank because the world fell apart and mm -hmm. so I basically, if I've got some writing on 2020, I'll leave it there. But if I've got an empty space, I just white out the 2020 and let the 2021 be a bigger chunk. Nice. And <laughs> basically I wrote at the start of it, like 2020 was a dumpster fire. So if there's no journaling, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm surprised um, you didn't go for the A5 five-year journal. Man, the next five years, maybe? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I, I, I believe me, I have considered buying the A5 next year and be like, well, I could give the A6 to my kid, but no. It's, um, I like that it's small and compact. I think I, I don't have very much room on my bedside table because I have a lot of mm. <laughs> on my bedside table. And so <laughs> I needed it to be small and compact, I guess. So um, mm. I, I, I did consider the A5, but I'm like, if I'm already struggle streeting on getting my daily pages done, yeah. like, mm -hmm. I, 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 it's okay. I, we'll, we'll do A6 just for some, but obviously you've seen the little pocket rocket in my latest, uh, my latest Love YouTube it. video, my, my little. You are making me jump ship because I have repurposed this note multiple times this year. It's only February. It is currently <laughs> <laughs> my Japanese learning journal. But after watching your video, oh my God, I'm getting so excited talking about this. I'm like, I want to become, I want to journal that way, how, what you're doing, because it is <laughs> happiness in a little package. Love it, it really is it is just I what do you call it the highlight take... journal right the highlight... yeah i called it the high yeah because it's it's not writing sentences we're just drop it we're just jotting down the highlights of the day so that when it comes time to do a daily page because i'm forever behind i need and i'm getting old in, in my time so <laughs> i need help to know what and when and if anything of any noteworthy stuff needed to be documented and if i haven't taken a photo for that day i don't know what happened last week wednesday I've got no clue. I, I, I probably worked, but that's about it. And so I decided to use this to document just a couple of like bullet points of main things that happen. Um, and then I'll probably scroll through my phone. I make folders on my phone for photos for each month so that I know where everything is. Mm -hmm. This is so nerdy. Um, <laughs> and then I, I, I haven't talked about this guy yet, but this is a um what do you call these things oh uh, like a rolodex and so Ooh. i put i put one to 31 and and a little card on the front and if i have any ephemera that matches that day instead of bulking up my hobo 
waiting for it to be used, I put it on the corresponding day and then I will stamp the card and note down what it is and where it came from. So I just repurposed it with wow. uh, lots of scrapbook papers. Like this is like office nerd chic. <laughs> so it to help me because I collect so many bits of ephemera and then they get all jumbled up and I forget what went where, what right, meant to right, go. Right, exactly. So this way I can just slip it into the date. And the corresponding so each, days. The corresponding day and then hopefully I'm not more than a month. If I'm more than a month behind, this is not going to help me. There's no hope for me if I'm more than a month behind. This is just... <laughs> I but love so this cold. idea and I want to go to my closest office max <laughs> the staples at the boring stationery stores in like yeah. the US that well, it is boring like, like this the boring oh. yeah they're the, they are the boring colors but I just like re-tab them with like scrapbooking paper so to make it all cute you only see the tabs so the tags are still cute I love but, this because um, my issue with my ephemera is that it's just like a perpetual pile on my desk that I I shuffle to the side when I need to place my laptop here and then when I need to do something else I shuffle it again and then probably once a month I would like all right what what am I doing with this yeah, deck yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's like or it's like stuffed into the back of my hobby yes. and then it kind of ends up like this where it's like got that like like a ephemera belly you know how you have like like a food baby ephemera belly in my back of my journal and I was just getting so annoyed that I would be like I have so much paper on my desk already, but then adding daily ephemera to it, I kind of go, where, where is, what, it, what did I collect on this day? So I'm trying to be more efficient with my eph ephemera building. So I decided to trial this as an option and I end up, once you, st I have like the mini data stamps, you can mm -hmm. date the little cards and say like on this day, on this day. So they will end up being ephemera <laughs> at the end of the year. You'll have all these like little dated stamps and like handwritten notes. I'm like, well, that'll be cute. I can just chip those into my journal. <laughs> this is why, this is why I need uh, two monthly books for every Hobonichi. <laughs> because I, when in, when in, my, my motto is when in doubt, chip it in. And that is probably not the best advice if you don't want to bust the spine on your Hobonichi. But um, my planner is here. <laughs> is, yeah, uh, my planner is from Paper Mood, uh, which is a brand that I was introduced to through an Aussie store here um, called, I want to say it's called Bun Baogu or Bun Boogu. Mm -hmm. And they are have become my, my favorite shop to shop at because they're slowly getting in Japanese stationery, really like current stuff, not like three years ago stuff, like <laughs> like finger on the pole stuff, which I'm really, I'm really proud of those guys for doing it. They've been fantastic. And they introduced Paper Mood, which I think is the Chinese, mm -hmm. is it Chinese? Uh, I think it's company? a Chinese brand, yeah. They did like yeah. the daily page, sort of similar to the Hobonichi, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I love it because it's B6 in size, so it's not too big and it's not too small. All B6 right. is probably probably my secret love child of sizes. I think <laughs> I I love it so much. But I if, and Hobonichi, if you're also listening, please make a B6 Hobonichi because I think that would be such a hot size to journal in. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's got tumbleweed ribbon paper in it. It is uh. It's not pretty. It's just basic scribble notes, mm -hmm. 50,000 to-do lists and <laughs> uh, <laughs> random, random monsters everywhere. I love um, it. And it's a day to a page. It's got the monthly on the front. It's pretty basic. I wish it had a weekly view, but I can, I can live without the weekly view, but that's my work planner personal planner. I have no personal plans. Like, where are we going? I'm not making plans. So it's, it's all, just basic uh and then i think i have obviously have sketchbooks and things and the only other thing and this is your influence is the you got plot. one oh my god I how did, did you manage it? <laughs> it's a plot so, guys <laughs> it's a plot up i have a stationary pusher her name is mitts and i like to call in favors from her every now and again mm -hmm. and um i said could you order me one of these please and then i made a big order because i knew i couldn't get all the stuff i want to see i want to so, see what's in it <laughs> That's, the thing is, I only really just got it, so it's not, it's not, I've, I've started, I want to actually put all my 
uh, work notes in it for merchandise research for like washi tape and all that sort of stuff because that's another one of my I have been saying this for years now and one day I will I will put on my big girl pants and I will start making merchandise because my inkies have been begging me for it for years and I just haven't done it. I just keep thinking that my work won't translate well into merchandise. So I just haven't done it. I haven't made washi tape. I haven't made figures. I want to. And so this was like my step in the direction of, okay, well, I'll start doing research. And at least that's step one. And I got the little project manager thing. Yeah. So like each little section will be like, you know, washi tape manufacturing and sticky, like stickers and stuff. So I was, and I, you're such a bad influence, man. I, I've been a left-hander. I was, I had given up on rings because right. mm -hmm. we're, I'm doing all the stupid movements. And I think if I have to pull out my paper to use it, what's the point? Because right. you, you want to enjoy the experience of a really hot leather cover. And when you open it on camera and I saw those tiny, tiny little rings, I was like, chef's kiss. I, I could use this. <laughs> and, then, and then I went Googling and I was like, wow, they're never going to ship to me. And I'd already been talking to Mitz about something else. And I said, you know, by the way, could you please place an order for quarter? And apparently she was already ordering for someone else. So I was like, yeah. like I said, I, I love that woman so hard. So yes, yeah, so I have the quarter. I think that's pretty much it besides like a plethora of like sketchbooks and things like that, which I have like roaming around everywhere, but nothing um nothing of any brand or interest like my current sketchbook is a handmade one that my best friend made me oh wow um, for my birth for my birthday and my sketchbook is is still collage so crazy it. bits of uh basically you do art would, in any kind of notebooks right any kind of sketchbook yeah. so really yeah. doesn't need to like focus on like a certain brand whether it works watercolor collaging because i feel like any medium works for collaging yeah <laughs> it does i mean this has watercolor paper in it and there is like watercolor in there oh wow but if um if it didn't take watercolor i would just collage watercolor paper on top so right. <laughs> I, I, i'm pretty easy going when it comes to books if i if i don't like the paper in it i will just collage paper that i like on top of it and make it my own that way um i'm pretty I'm not very good with brands. Like I, I, this was why I was worried about coming on your beautiful podcast was because I'm not well versed in the art of people and makers. I, I know what I like. I collect what I like. I use what I like. And then I forget about who makes them, which is probably really bad. So if you ever think of me as an influencer, please don't because I, I this is know. good. This is this is healthy. I feel like people who follow you, they blame me for enabling. So if they follow you, they don't have that problem because it's like no. it's about you making stuff instead of buying stuff from certain brands. So I like that. <laughs> You're a great influence in this community. <laughs> <laughs> don't feel like April, okay? <laughs> Forget no, about it. Do be, <laughs> no, it's not about that because you open your, you open the gate and you open the door to artists that don't get recognition. And that is huge because it's hard to find those little indie makers, you need, you, you're helping put a, like a big, like, no, don't, don't ever talk badly about that because I want to support the little people. It's the little people that make everything go together. And the so artist I, that I, gets overlooked. Yeah. I know. I, I yeah, think it's they, also they, in me because I, I grew up also being like, you know, art should be a hobby. Art should be just a side hustle, right? And like, it's a very Asian mm -hmm. mentality. And in a way, I feel like I want to break that mode and showcase yeah. all the people that are doing well and sharing these things. And that has as much significant um, impact to people as with them and like their other hobby items, like people who fish have good fishing rods or people who bike who have good bicycles and people who love stationery yeah. wants good stickers, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, I want my washi tape to stick, to stick to my paper. Like I want it to be, I want it to do what it's meant to do. And I think if you're passionate about things, you do buy beautiful things because like if you love handbags you want to buy a beautiful handbag if you love journals you want to buy beautiful journals and i think uh, i don't i don't drink i don't smoke i don't i've never been to a nightclub i don't do anything i am a hardcore nerd i have 
a pink gaming section or like a pink gaming computer and I have a lot of art supplies and I didn't always have the best of the best. I always bought the best that I could afford mm -hmm. because I was, a, I was a single mom on a, on a single income and I had two little kids and I could, I saved to buy my Prismacolor pencils. I asked for things for my birthday, for Christmas. Like I, I upgraded as often as I could um, because I know that if you love something, you put, you put money into it and you, and you buy things that make you happy. But that doesn't mean that a, a $5 watercolor set from, um, I want to say Michael's or, or like Spotlight if you're Australian. Mm -hmm. um, if it brings you joy, I like, I lived on those, you know, those big old, yeah. school, like, but I haven't always, like uh, if you could see my studio, I am surrounded by high-end art supplies. But that is what my life is now. It was never like it was back then. I'm still using the same Neo Color 2 crayons that I was using in 2013. Mm -hmm. They are broken, they are haggard, and they are like little nubs, but they're, they're still chunking. And I, I saved a lot of money to, to buy those things because I loved what I did and I wanted to use the best that I could afford at the time. Mm -hmm. But when it, when it comes to journaling, anything goes. Like some of my favorite journals are exercise books covered in fabric that I had in high school. And they were just a, a 57 cent exercise book that I covered with some fabric that I stole from my mom. I'm sorry, mom. Um, and I, uh, I, I hot glued it and that was my journal. And it was, and it was amazing because yeah. it, I'm, you make it amazing. You, you don't have to have all the pretty and the glam and everything. I mean, it's beautiful to have, don't get me wrong. It's lovely to have beautiful things, but you can make a, a magical space in anything because it's, it's containing your life. It's containing your, your story is in between the pages of whatever journal it is that you can get your hands on. Don't think that when you start out, if you are a beginner and you're listening to this, don't think that you need to have 57 leather covers. Do not think you need to have a Hobonichi or whatever mm -hmm. journal is currently trending. You can have the crappiest like this little notebook is it's called the little fat notebook it costs a dollar 20. <laughs> it is just lined paper but it is filled with sketches and drawings and then i put some ghetto ribbons on the side to try and make it cute <laughs> but um but i i love i love I it love it's it. part of my story it, yes. like i i Every book, no matter what it is, or its price tag, or if it's leather or not leather, it contains your essence and your soul. And that doesn't have a price tag. That's one of the most important things that you can do. And I think that just start. Doesn't matter what you've got, just mm -hmm. start. And the rest will follow. The yes. rest will follow. Exactly. Um, yeah. I, soapbox, I, I'll, get off. I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> I, I will happily place that soapbox for you anytime because I love every single thing you just said. And I think it is an echo for to how I've been feeling all these years. And I'm just so happy that you are actively inspiring so many people in your community to do the same. And I can only hope to be there someday. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're already there, my love. You are already there. Believe me. <laughs> I, I don't want I don't want this conversation to end, but oh my god, I love everything we talked about. And for people who wants to be who wants a glimpse into the Little Raven Inc. journaling world, you know, you, you can go to our Instagram and YouTube but under Little Little Raven Inc. But of course I highly recommend checking out Corny's Patreon where all the magic happens. It's the party, right? Like so yeah, I yeah. already told you where to get the tickets. Just just head on over. <laughs> <laughs> Give, go to one or two, you know? <laughs> and yeah, you, you know, yeah, you've been a great influence in the community. You inspire people who are inspiring other people like Mitz and everyone else. So I just I'm just so happy to have you know, known you as a friend all these years and that oh, it really proves that the station community is not just a play thing. Like we are real people in here doing things yeah. that change our lives every single day. Yeah, I agree. hope this episode can change yours too, whoever's listening. Yes. Because it definitely changed mine. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. You're too sweet. You're too sweet. Anyway. You. 
thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Stationery Cafe. Um, definitely check out Corny wherever she is. And if you are interested in supporting us, we always welcome and review on Apple Podcasts and, you know, check out our website, thestationerycafe.com. And as always, we'll look forward to bringing you another great episode next week. Bye, Courtney. Bye.